this page. Keep listening. I like it. I love it. I want more of it. Good morning, America. This is KC Stark on Let's Talk Pot.com with HowToMarijuana.com. We are live broadcasting from Colorado, the epicenter of the Canvas Revolution. Uh, my fellow partner in crime, Mr. Charles Yowden, is on his way to the station as we speak in his big, bad limousine. Uh, he is actually taking care of business, uh, submitting a reply to the Marijuana Enforcement Division and the Department of Revenue doing what we do out here every day in the dirty of the game of the cannabis matrix. And there's a lot going on every day across this country. And Mr. Howard will be here soon. We also expect to have a few callers out there in the great old volunteer state of Tennessee. If you've been listening this last week, there's a lot going on. We just returned from our end of prohibition tour across the country, about 2,025 miles in about seven days. We hit Topeka, Kansas, the capital. We had a show at the Uptown in Kansas City, Missouri. We dropped down to Thomas Jefferson's capital in Jefferson, Missouri. We bumped up to Frankfort, Kentucky, and then headed down to Nashville, Tennessee, where we had a crowd at each location and met with advocates, uh, politicians, senators, mayors, governors, uh, working to solve this problem of reefer madness. And we've seen a lot of different solutions, and some of them work. Uh, and some of them actually create more problems than they solve. And since we're talking about Tennessee and Nashville uh, this afternoon, Tennessee actually passed a bill uh, that was designed and signed by the governor, uh, went into law almost a year ago. However, it stipulated that the cannabis would be grown by the Tennessee Tech. Uh, it stipulated that it would be uh, distributed by Tennessee Tech, and that was the law. And that was supposed by uh, and provide relief for those people in Tennessee. What happened actually was uh, when Tennessee asked the Department of uh, Drug Enforcement Agency if they could grow marijuana, uh, they said no. Uh, so even though they considered it hemp at 0.3% THC, uh, the, the DEA still has a clause that considers hemp, cannabis, and marijuana in all shapes, sizes, and forms as a Schedule One drug. So when we look at these bills and we see them being signed across this nation, you don't always get what you ask for, and sometimes the bills are absolutely um, don't solve the thing. Good news here, and we're looking down at the Sunshine State this morning, Florida nurseries, after almost a year and a half of waiting in line for, good morning, Mr. Houghton, welcome back, sir. The man with the plan just walked in. Good morning, everybody. Mr. Holland has been out there taking care of business this morning, uh, working for our clients and his to uh, make sure that their businesses stay viable. And that's what we're talking about every day on the Canada Business Attorney Hour. Uh, in Florida, this is a big day. Nurseries wanting to grow medical marijuana can begin applying. And we've watched this happen. When Florida passed their bill last year, uh, Governor Rick Scott signed that. It was called the Compassionate Medical Canvas Act. That was actually a year ago this month, in June 2014. They called it the Charlotte's wet bill. Uh, however, when it passed, there were lawsuits on the policies and procedures of that bill, which held it up in the courts. Uh, that has just recently been set aside by Judge Watkins. And now the green light, no pun intended, has been given. And the state has actually divided Florida into five different regions, uh, north, south, east, west, and central. And one nursery per region will be given the right to grow that cannabis. The cost of the application is $60,000, and nurseries will have to prove that they have the financial wherewithal and infrastructure uh, to provide for that plant and sell that plant. There also is going to be a $150,000 licensing fee uh, for the massive centers. Uh, that seems to be not that bad when you consider that there will be five massive centers. Uh, this is setting up a statewide program in Florida. So I know our friends and families and patients and politicians and advocates and entrepreneurs have been waiting for over a year and a half for this to go into action. And here we go, Florida, let the games begin. And if you do want to learn how to play the marijuana matrix and start those businesses, that's what Mr. Howard and I do and have done for the last six years across this country. The MMJ Business Academy is designed to help you 
with your business ideas so you can take advantage of those laws and not only do good, as Mr. Howden says, for people, but also do good business. Welcome back, Mr. Howden. Hey, sorry I'm late, but uh, it was one of those mornings when uh, duty called, and so I had to take care of a few things. Um, I, too, had been looking at the... Uh, uh, they opened up those applications yesterday. Hallelujah, right? Yeah, and it, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's about time uh, that they got their stuff together down in Florida. Now, for those of you that don't know, uh, out of all of the 18 million people that live in Florida, um, less than 40 uh, businesses qualify for uh, the standards that they put in, and that standard was is that you had to be in business for 30 years as an agricultural horticulture. As an agriculture, exactly, not marijuana, because obviously they haven't had marijuana for 30 years. But you had to have been in business for 30 years, and you had to have the type of license issued by the state of Florida that allowed you to produce uh, 400,000 plants or more. So, so it's a high bar, but with those five centers, with only granting five centers, you're going to need a high bar to meet that demand, I think, Mr. Allen. Yeah, because, you know, first of all, the population alone in Florida is going to, you know, require, um, you know, that many centers. I, I hope that they come online quickly with the rules and regulations for production and for distribution. That's a very good point. You know, we, uh, we look across this country, you mentioned population, Mr. Howden, and Colorado is only 5 million strong in the entire state. <laughs> that's, that's counting children. You know, so when you divide this up and you look at the 132 metric tons that were sold last year in 2014, imagine what would happen if that was a 10 million, a 12 million, a 20 million state. Pennsylvania, for example, has 13, 14 million people in it. Yeah. They yeah so a, a, they're over the 18 million. 18 million, right. So if you look at the numerical calculations and the divinity of math, uh, you're going to come up with a big number. So when those application fees they look high, the bar is high, it's not easy to get those licenses, but you're gonna to have to be a pretty big dog to supply that demand for that CBD oil. Well, and the, the article that I was talking about, uh, the gen one of the gentlemen that's applying for one of the licenses was talking about you know needing five or ten million dollars. You know, I think that's uh, a heavy, I think that's a little heavy handed. I do too. Uh, I mean, we've seen these grow ops. You can spend a lot of money like a fool or you can spend it wisely. We, we like to teach growing to scale here at the Marijuana Business Academy. We've seen mom and pops to millionaires succeed and fail. And it's usually not the money, it's almost always the plan. You know, whether you're starting small and growing big or, grow, you know, starting big and hoping to capitalize that market, you, say, you face a lot of the same problems. No well, crop failures, consistent human resources, growers, patient acquisition, and it's not always the biggest that survives. We've seen that with many of companies across this country as they fade into the past when they're not don't have a good plan. Well, and that's a, you know that's the thing. Part of it is uh, the uh, lack of capital sometimes will prevent any kind of a startup, whether you're in this industry or in any other, from moving forward. But the other thing is is that um, frequently, it's you know it's kind of inattention to detail or, or not, knowing, not knowing, yeah, not knowing how to run a business or not knowing how to remain compliant, not knowing the rules, and regulations, not knowing that this you know this is a business, but marijuana, no matter what you've done in the past, it's marijuana, it's money, it's politics, it's a lot different. Well, it, and that's the thing is, is that I, I've you know I've tried to drill that into people's heads that I represent. And sometimes they get it, and sometimes they don't. But you know, you just have to understand that this isn't your normal business beastie, because in virtually every state in which it exists, it is probably the most regulated industry in that particular state. Yeah, we just saw Georgia as beautiful as on their website on Tuesday. They just launched the website for doctors and patients in. Georgia to go online. They have a nice website. The, the government has set up a nice portal, uh, but that's a lot different here. Uh, in Georgia, for example, the doctor submits the application online electronically, but then also has to report back on that patient every three months. Here in Colorado, there are paper forms that are mailed in by the U.S. Post Certified Mail, and the doctor uh, typically has access to that patient, but doesn't have to report back on it. So every state, every rule, every regulation can trip you up you just miss a paragraph yeah and I just I spent 
uh, yesterday afternoon doing a compliance check for uh, a client and you know, we found some violations and tried to get that straightened out. And, you know, everybody's doing their best to become compliant, but you know, there's just, there are so many rules, so many regulations. And they change every week. I mean, yeah. just every legislative session, we'll see it where the legislator will come out just the last session here in Colorado, new rules for caregivers, new rule for CBDs. Uh, children can now have access to it on school grounds if the school grounds approve of it. Yeah, and also to, you know, new forms that foreign investors have to fill out. Um, and new forms, we all like those. That's another application. Yeah, I mean, that's, a, you know, I'd add that to the checklist of things that you need to look out for, new fees for submitting the forms, uh, new fingerprinting requirements. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on. And that's yeah. what we're here for, really. So if you stay tuned, the policy of the Academy is if you can catch up, you can keep up. Our job is to catch you up so you can keep up with the laws so you don't get left behind this revolution. We've met advocates across this country, Mr. Howden, that have fought hard, tooth and nail, that sometimes struggle to go from advocate to entrepreneur. Now, we've seen the exact opposite, where entrepreneurs are trying to come to this game and they have no idea about the advocacy and the work that's done at the nuts and bolts level on the ground by the battle boots. And we have callers today and all this week, those advocates we met, Mr. Houghton, the stories, those average Americans that are changing the laws. It's not the big corporations making this happen. It's you, me, it's we. No, and it's truly, you know, no pun intended, a grassroots push to get these things going. And the thing that you need to realize is, is that these people that are spending their time and money and, and reputations on uh, they're making it possible for entrepreneurs to come in behind them and get into the business. You know, because without that advocacy, without that push for rules, there are no businesses. You're absolutely right. And we've seen that everywhere I went, it was the average patient, the average person. It wasn't that big organization. It wasn't that lobbyist group. It was that person on the ground in Nashville, Tennessee, that person on the ground in Frankfort, Kentucky. That person on the ground in Jefferson, Missouri, standing in a 90 degree heat, 90% humidity, with a sign saying, you know, cannabis heals. Yeah, and, and and the legislators are beginning to to recognize this and they're moving forward. For instance, in New York, uh, they just, uh, both the House and Senate, and the Senate overwhelmingly passed 50 to 12, an emergency access bill that will fast track. Uh, access to medicine, marijuana as medicine in New York State, uh, for those people that are you know critically ill and really need it. And for those listening, New York State had it has a program, but it is it has it been slow tracked actually. It yeah. hasn't done anything. You know, and people I think are beginning to realize, especially legislators, that just passing the law is just the beginning. And if you drag your feet, or if you make the law so you know, ridiculous that, you know, you pass the ability to possess it, but no way to grow it or produce it or dis distribute it. You know, what you've done is that, you know, you've, you've created a very pretty black market that is hard to regulate. Well, not only that, but also you created hope in people only to have that hope dashed by when they realize what it is that they've just been handed. So New York's going to fast track this now. They're going to fast track it for certain patients. Uh, that have that are in critical need so of marijuana. So it's for the patients, but we're, what about the centers? What about the distribution? Still, you know, they're they're right now. As you know, I think it was June fifth was the deadline to make application for one. They extended the, that right. They yeah. extended it by two weeks. Yeah, for it was back in May, and then they extended it for a couple of weeks. So those um, applications are now in. They're in, and uh, you know, they should be being processed. And they should be, uh, you know, being vetted so that those uh, operations can begin. I want to see the big Apple T-shirt turn green. Yeah, yeah, wouldn't that be fantastic? It's but coming. Would, yeah. yeah. So, so tip of the hat, and that's what you see. This is a lethargic process. Politics is not easy. It's not fun. It's not fair. And you don't always get the sausage that you wanted for. But as we move forward, it's I'm just a bill, and we try to get a better bill. And you mentioned New York. I was reading about Pennsylvania, Mr. Howden. This is exciting. Uh, it says here the headline, Entrepreneurs Position and Prepare for New Industry. That's what we'd love to see. Uh, you know, they signed that bill uh, last year uh, legalizing medical marijuana. 
uh, and they estimate that it's worth 333 to 665 million per year. And now they have an, um, the bill authored by Republican State Senator Mike Fulmer uh, established a framework for medical marijuana industry, which New York should do. It sets up 65 growers, 65 processors, and 130 dispensers. Each would have a licensing fee of only $50,000 for the state license. It only allows for indoor growing. But this is a perfect example of what can happen. Uh, the people there on the ground worked and protested and pitched and worked. And now we have a bill. Uh, it was it passed the state Senate 40 to 7. It was sponsored once again, authored by a Republican state senator. Uh, and it says that 85% of the residents support allowing medical marijuana. Uh, the governor has said, Tom Wolf in Pennsylvania, said that he would sign the bill. So now it's stuck in the House committee. So this was just yesterday. So if you are there in Pennsylvania, contact your House committees and tell them to move this bill. Yeah. A lot of good bills die on that committee floor and by default because of time or effort. Does it say which committee in the House it's in? No, it does not. Uh, okay, well, the, the thing that you need to do then is you need to, to get a hold of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives, find out what committee it's sitting in front of, and then contact those representatives, House of Representatives uh, individuals that sit on that committee and make your voice be heard. That right, and contact the Republican State Senator Mike Fulmer of Lebanon County and tell him thank you and ask him what you can do for him. A lot of times these bills put these uh, senators in difficult positions, so your support uh, gives them the fortitude often they need and that's what the senators told us when we asked, what can we do for you? Call yeah. us, give us I mean, fortitude. I mean, if you're a, a House of Representatives member or a senator at the state level, we fully recognize that pushing forward one of these bills can make you feel a little bit lonely. And you're right. We talked about population. Uh, Pennsylvania, up until the 19th century, was our state capital. The Philadelphia, that was the nation's capital at one time. It, it was, up until the 19th century, the largest population. It's now the sixth most populous state of 12 million people. Pennsylvania, if you can do this and you can do it right, if you can set up the right to grow it, the right to infuse it, the right to process it, the right to dispense it, I don't think 130 dispensers are going to be enough. I don't think 65 growers will be enough, but that is a start. And you've seen it, Mr. Houghton, in Nevada. You know, they put a limit on growers, and then two years later they say, look, Let's lift it. Let's have more. Yeah, so you can always proceed with this uh, for more opportunity. Well, and also too, you know, again, like we've always preached here, is look for the ancillary opportunities because as those growers come online, as those dispensaries become available, they're going to need everything, literally everything, security, from heating, legal, yeah, plumbing, attorneys, accountants, bookkeepers. It's interesting you mentioned that, Mr. Allen, because the law in Pennsylvania says it must be grown indoors. So one gentleman actually has secured, uh, pre-leased, an underground, 100-foot underground storage facility. So he actually has a cave that's been used for dry storage. Yeah, and, and, and for it, perfect security. Yeah, it used to be a, humidity. Yeah, it used to be a limestone mine. That's right. A hundred feet under the surface, and I saw a picture of it. You know, and it's empty. It's got, really beautiful. it's got white walls and the most beautiful, flat, completely flat, concrete oh, floor. So and, and, you know, I just, meets greenstone. I love yeah, it. and I just, well, I took one look at it and I got, what well, I want to rely on it in a cave. Yeah, because you want to talk about security. Unless yeah. you want to dig 100 feet through the earth. Then come and get me. Yeah, come and get me. So, and it's, it's one perfect, way in, one way out. Yeah, and a perfectly uniform, 24-7, 365 day, it's exactly the same temperature, temperature and humidity and lighting, everything. I, I think so it's it a just beautiful shows idea. what we teach here at the Academy. If you look at the rules and know them, you can prepare your lease before the law even hits. So tip of a hat to that entrepreneur. We're getting ready to go to break, Mr. Alvin. And uh, this is Casey Stark with the Canna Business Attorney, Charles T. Howe. See you on the other side. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Dana's with Dana. Dana. Yeah. 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 Dana. Y
marijuana patients law. Great woman, we met her down there in Nashville, Tennessee. She came out great, great week, hard work. You were hard at work. Oh, yeah. Is this Dana? Yeah. Is it pronounced Dana or Dana? Dana. 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 Hey, good morning, Dana. That's Mr. Charles T. Howard, my partner in crime here at the Cannabis Business Attorney in the Marijuana Academy. Uh, Mr. Howard, meet, meet Dana. Hey, Dana. Uh, let me tell you. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about what's going to happen. We are on break right now, although we are live on YouTube. <laughs> but we're not brought we're not broadcasting right this minute uh, we will be in about two minutes uh, we will come on you'll hear some music in the background uh, Casey and I will talk for just a second uh, one of the other of us probably Casey will introduce you and then <coughs> we'll, yeah then we'll go ahead and bring you in and really <laughs> want to help you uh, I saw your work I'm proud of what you've done I want to give you a voice at an avenue to tell people what you're doing there and how they can reach you and how they can help. Yeah, and, and for God's sake, don't be shy about you know patting yourself on the back and also pushing the agenda that you're talking about and make sure that you mention several times, and we'll give you that opportunity, uh, several times how people can get a hold of you and how they can help you. Okay? Oh, no, this is... Uh, and you've got 20, we have a segment for you that's about 20 minutes long. I know that sounds like a lot of time, but I can tell you that it will fly by in a New York minute. So, uh, back in 60 seconds. Yeah, we'll be on in 60 seconds. Um, and uh, just, I mean, be yourself, have fun with it, and um, just listen to the questions that we ask you. But again, don't be afraid to, to tell who you are and what you're doing and how you're doing it and how people get a hold of you. That's the biggest thing. That's the reason why you're on here is to get the word out to help you. She's amazing, Mr. Howard. You should have met her. She's a she's a the the light machine. Where where did you meet her? Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville. A Nashvillean. A volunteer state, that's right. Um, military? Are you a military? Is that where you're moving around or are you trying to get away from the law? <laughs> Ron in 15 seconds. Bum, 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 bum. I like it. Son of the South. Yeah. Just a good old boy. Yeah. I love it. Anyway, this is Charles, the Cannabis Attorney. I can be reached at Charles at the Cannabis Attorney dot com. I got my partner in crime here, uh, Casey Stark. Good Casey. morning, Mr. Howden. Welcome to HowToMarijuana.com and the MMJ Business Academy. It's a good day for cannabis. Yeah, and uh, also listen to us. Streaming on Let's Talk Pot.com. You can also go to K High's YouTube channel and uh, catch us live on YouTube. You can see our smiling faces on that. We we'll wave to everybody. Um, Stay and, high. Yeah, anyway. Um, we were actually fortunate, Mr. Howard. We, uh, during the break, we got have a call on the line. We were in Nashville, Tennessee last week. I'm on the Capitol steps. You know, a bunch of super troopers coming up there and we're getting their stories. And one of them is on the line right now. Uh, Dana, uh, with the Marijuana Cannabis Patients Wall. Good morning. You know, we're glad to have you online. I'd like to give you a chance. I was able to meet you. Tell the world who you are and what you're doing and what's happening in Tennessee. Now, 
that's a very big wall. Now listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. When I met her and her story, she started this just a year ago. Tell us what's happened in the last 365 days, Dana. Uh, Way to go. And that's international now. You're, you've gone international. Yeah, you're, you know, so the data went from a, a Facebook, a cabin in the woods, literally, right? You have a cabin in the woods and an old schoolhouse in the woods. And she went from nowhere to international. How did she do it in America? One, she cares. Two, she knows. And three, she does. She got up, she spoke up, and she was ad active from day one. Uh, tell, tell us a little bit more about that, that patient's wall because a lot of people don't. Uh, what is that about? That's correct. It's part, that is part of public record. There was a document that was submitted in the 70s to the Nixon administration uh, saying that, hey, you know what, this war on drugs, uh, by the way, cannabis may actually work for this. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Yeah, I <laughs> oh, I saw, I, I've seen you. I wouldn't want to have you angry. That's a great idea. Wow, that yeah. is a noble cause, Daniel. Well, see, and, and, and you know, I can't imagine that's an incredible amount of work to pull that together, but I also can't think of, of something that really makes this more real for the federal government take a look at it and say, listen, in a year, we found 25,000 people along with 8,000 photos to show you that this works. And, you know, I, I think, you know, that's going to be a very powerful statement uh, for yeah, our 5, federal. 5,280 feet. That's 5,280. That's the same elevation of Denver, by the way. Yeah, a mile long. <laughs> that's a mile high, 5,280. Yeah. That is brilliant. That almost gives me tears of joy. Yeah, I mean, to, to see, you know, uh, because frequently that's what people and as particularly our legislators need. Um, you know, I saw it time and time again when I was working with the state to create the, the rules and regulations in Colorado and also in local jurisdictions. I found it over and over and over again that there were legislators that were vehemently opposed to any kind of marijuana. It was the devil's weed. It's that reefer madness craziness that uh, we keep hearing until it became personal. And then when it was their wife, their husband, their child, a relative, their mom, a brother, a cousin, you know, even their next door neighbor, once it became personal, they educated themselves and they changed their mind. And I can't think of a better way of making a poignant statement that 
these are real people with real names, with real images, That's right. with real conditions that are really getting help from cannabis as a medicine. And some of them don't survive. I spoke with Dana there. You know, some of those patients don't survive the next year. Yeah, and you know, and I and I think that just adds to the urgency of what we're doing. You know, some of these people, they don't have time. You know, and like I said the other day, I, I keep certain you know, sayings on my refrigerator of all places just to remind me. But one of the sayings I've got on there is it says, it says the problem is, is that you think you have time. And you may not. And you may fall into that category, God forbid. But she's actually taking time out, out of her life. She is such a super trooper, and that's why I'm so glad you called. Now, if you're listening there in Tennessee, there's some serious problems. You know, last year they passed a bill um, that allowed Tennessee Tech to grow it, allowed Tennessee Tech to distribute it by law in Tennessee. However, after the law was passed and Tennessee Tech applied uh, to the federal government to get seeds to grow marijuana, hemp, and cannabis, the DEA said, are you crazy? No. So there were two compassionate bills that were both rejected by the legislator in Tennessee. House Bill 561 and Senate Bill 660 would have established medical marijuana programs similar to those found in Colorado and the District of Columbia but both of those bills stalled in committee. It shows here that Tennesseans support medical marijuana by over 75%. Um, Dana, you have a lot of work down there to do. This is not easy. Uh, so people are still going to jail in Tennessee for less than a grant. Yeah, you have a very rich Nashville and a very poor out rural state, that's right. Or a grant. A grant. Well, now that you become a drain, you've torn apart whoever that person's family. Uh, you've got. Yeah, exactly. Well, get this, Mr. Alvin. The bill signed by Governor Haslin, Senate Bill two, Haslin, Senate Bill, thank you, Tennessee, Senate Bill 280 was an effort to find a workable solution in states here. It, while the law does provide protections for patients in the state of Tennessee, it requires them to either travel across state lines to get it or have it shipped potentially illegal by the federal post office to secure it. So. Governor, what is wrong with those governors in Tennessee? Well, and then. Yeah, yeah and that's he, just, what, he just set them up to be criminals. He's saying, hey, you can have it, go get it, but if you get caught, don't blame me. Yeah, and that's the thing that infuriates me. We always use Iowa as an example, but Tennessee is apparently another shining example of giving people hope and then jerking it away and to me that you know that is criminal in and of itself these people have enough problems and especially if you're talking about parents with kids or something like that one of the parents usually volunteers to cross that state line and yeah, go you know 600 to be, miles to be the sacrificial lamb in case they get caught it's a thousand miles Mr. John. we drove that dana it's a thousand miles from nashville to colorado springs you know that imagine a patient that's just a parent who's trying to save the life of a child and now has to drive a thousand miles one way a thousand miles back and hoping that he doesn't get caught in kansas or missouri or Indiana or Illinois yeah, on the way back to Nashville. He gets to travel a thousand miles across hostile territory, shall we say, and then if he gets to Tennessee, there is some degree of sanctuary. My goodness, what is going on down there? Why is that? You're kidding me. Well, no, and, and yeah, 
That's what I read too. How absurd is that? I mean, yeah, and how did that feel? And yet, that's what the Medical Association of America, the FDA, and the DEA says is better for you. Like a, a drug-induced coma zombie lifestyle uh, that puts you on disability because now there's no way you can work in that zombie state. It's hard to take care of your family and children. So they've actually, it seems that there's a big crime here between big pharma and big politics and big industry that really is an incarceration nation. It's a, a pharmaceutical zombie uh, that now has you on hundreds if not thousands of dollars of pills per month and you're automatically on disability because under those pills you can't work. That's true and then you have people like me that have been there around and I you know we might call that So you're telling me that you took these pills and they've been able to replace what Big Pharma was giving you and you feel better? Yes. Yeah. Well, see, and that, and that, yeah, and that's fantastic. I, and again, Dana, remind everyone how they can get a hold of you, uh, and then also tell us what they can do to help. I mean, getting a hold of you is one thing, but what can they do to help? But first yeah, off, let's, let's start. A wall. Yeah, let's first off. How can they get a hold of you and participate in what you're doing? That is wonderful. Well, in less than a year, you've gone international. Yeah, and see, so yeah, it's not a bunch of teenage dope smokers, is it? It's, it's it's people, it's just average day Americans that have been polluted by big pharma and well, deceived by big government. You know, and what the, what you you know said when the legislature says we don't know about dosing, well, they didn't even try and learn. Good point. Uh, you know, and and you know, it gets back to one of the articles that we read. One of the legislators freely stated and admitted that the people are a lot smarter than the government. Well, if you don't know about dosing, go find out. Yes. You know, it's it's that simple. So we've only got a few seconds left. Uh, Dana, remind us one more time how they can get a hold of you, and uh, we thank you very much. Dana, I want to. Dana, I want to tell everyone across the world. It was such a pleasure meeting you there at the rally, the end of Prohibition tour. We met winners and patients, and uh, you know that's a volunteer state, and you have proven the motto of your state. Uh, it's all red, white, and blue, and it's turning green. Uh, this is KC Stark, and we are live across the nation, a thousand miles from Colorado Springs to Nashville, Tennessee, with Dana with the ncpwall.org. If you want to help build that mile wall and be a part of any prohibition, please contact her or my attorney, Mr. Charles T. Houghton. And my name is Casey Stark at howtomarijuana.com. And really what you've got to hear is that these are people that are on the front line 
they're not trained politicians, but they are saying clearly, we're not going to stand for the status quo anymore. That simply does not fly. And so we're going to catch you guys on the other side. Thank you again, Dana. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dana, are you still online? Yes, I am. Thank you so much. No, thank you. We really appreciate we'll the work that you're doing. We'll stay in touch. we got to get another caller on the line, but thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it. Great work. Thank you, Tom. I have a great day. You, you too. The next one, two, three. Hey, good morning, Seth. This is KC with my attorney, Mr. Charles D. Houghton. Good morning. Good, good, Seth. Uh, this is Charles. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about what's going to happen uh, so that you're prepared. Um, we're on break right now, but we are live on the YouTube channel. So um, what you're saying can be heard to some people, but we're not broadcasting right this minute. Um, uh, we will be on in about two minutes, minute and a half, something like that. Uh, you'll hear music in the background, and then uh, you'll hear us talking, Casey and I talking back and forth, uh, and then Casey will introduce you, ask you, you know, who you are, what you're doing, and how you're doing it. Um, I want you to be completely unafraid to push whatever your agenda is, what you're doing, and more importantly, it's very important for you to get out how people can get in touch with you and how they can help. So... You know, keep yeah, that Seth in mind. Seth has done a great work, John. Uh, it's quite amazing. He actually, we got 60 seconds to air time, Seth, but um, we'll talk about it on the air. But yeah, he's real hard trooper, Mr. O. Yeah, and so, um, like I said, don't be afraid. You've got a 20 minute segment, a little less than 20 minutes, uh, that we'll be able to talk. It sounds like a lot of time, but it'll go by in a New York minute. So, um, anyway, uh, here we just go. stay on the line and you'll hear us. Thirty seconds to air. talking a little bit about the law and uh, cannabis. This is Charles, the Cannabis Business Attorney. I can be reached at charles at thecannabisinessattorney.com. Got my partner in crime here at KAC. Hey, good morning, Mr. Howard. We are having a blast here from Colorado to Tennessee this morning. It's a volunteer state hour, and we have another caller on the line, uh, Mr. Seth Green. Uh, I've watched him, and he's been an advocate and a super trooper. Uh, good morning, Seth. How are you doing? You know, it's, we're watching across this revolution, and as you see it too, every state has a different battle. Uh, what do you, what have you been doing? Who are you, and what have you been doing in Tennessee? Well, I'm from Tennessee. I'm from Tennessee. I'm from Tennessee. I'm from Tennessee. I'm Uh, 
fighting in this area now, located here, back in the later than it was in the Well, your personal experience with it, you know, so Seth was there living with these diseases and you were on the Big Pharma Solutions. How are the Big Pharmaceuticals working for you? That, I've never heard that before, of an American telling the world that Big Pharma and their prop solution is actually making them feel like a prisoner. You're a prisoner of the medical solutions. That is sad. Tell me more. You are so you were denied service at a hospital. You're telling yeah. me you were denied service. What was the name of the hospital? Darcy. What did you say? Darcy Medical Center. Johnson City. Now this is this is now I see your point of being treated like a prisoner. You're you know they're denying you. Uh, well, you're being treated worse than a prisoner. At least prisoners get medical care. That's right. Even prisoners have access to medical care. This is preposterous. And, you know, Seth, I've seen you. And, you know, your mind is sharp. Your body uh, has ailments. But you move like a bullet online. I think you, you administer several pages there in Tennessee. Is that correct? And when you actually started using when did you when did you find out that cannabis you know, was providing a solution? Was it and, and what did it take? Was it a, a lot of cannabis? Was it a little cannabis? Well, see, and that, you know, one of the things that I think people really need to hear, you know, we're here at letstalkpot.com, you know, the can of business attorney, how to marijuana, we're all about business and stuff like that, but we're also all, of the reason why we're doing this is for patients like Seth that, I mean, you know, the measure in my mind, the measure of a society and how progressive it is, is how it treats people you know, that have problems that are, you know, he didn't create any of these problems. They were thrust upon him. 
And in spite of those, he is still fighting not only for his own freedom, but from his own, yeah, for his own self-professed prison. Uh, I mean, it... it You know, and, and, and that's something that we hear over and over and over again, that is, is that he's not doing it just for him. He's doing it for people that have problems. You know, it's a selfless act. And, you know, my hat goes off to you yeah. for, for doing that, number one. And, and when you say, you know, you're blessed that you only have a mild version of cerebral palsy and you have a mild version it's of noble heart. So. I mean, I'm thinking that, you know, if I had, I don't know what mild is. But, uh, you know, for me, any level of cerebral palsy would be not mild. And so, you know, you can hear it in Seth's voice. He's downplaying it, but he's doing this not only for himself, but other patients. No, it's it's a selfless act. And you've got to hear that over and over and over again, that people are acting selflessly to get medicine in front of patients that truly need it. You know, Seth, how do people get in touch with you? What's the best way to, for everyone across Tennessee to reach out? I think you have a big rally coming up this weekend. Is that correct? This is your fourth rally, isn't it? Okay. Congratulations. Where is it going to be? Yeah, when and where is the rally going to be? Way to go. And so that is tough. That's Saturday at what time? And that's Eastern time, right? Tennessee time? Okay, and that's in Johnson City at the Johnson City Farmers Market? I am so proud of you, Seth, and everyone listening across this country. This is the Canada Business Attorney Hour. Mr. Houghton and I work every day helping people with ideas, turn those ideas into businesses, submitting those applications, preparing for these opportunities across this country. And Seth, I definitely want to stay in touch with you uh, and our previous caller to help you reach your goals as an entrepreneur so you can go from advocate and help create those jobs that you've worked so hard uh, to defend. This is a true story, America. Seth, um, once again, do you have a website that people can go to or a phone number they can call? Yeah, so reach out to Seth if you're listening. This guy is a super trooper. He's going to be putting on a ride, the fourth one, right there in a social, economically deprived part. And he's going to walk, talk, move, 
the entire nation one step at a time. I'm so proud of you, sir. Yeah, and, that, and, the, and the thing that people need to hear is, is that if you wonder how, how can I participate, how can I be part of this, show up at the Johnson City Farmers Market, get on Seth's website, do that. You don't have to be Yeah, you don't have to spend a ton of money. All you got to do is give your time and a voice. And that's really what we need. And Seth, I cannot, my hat's off to you. Um, I mean, I, I, it's people like you that are going to make the difference. And it's people like you that get me out of bed every morning and make me do yeah, what Seth, I, I do. I want to go to work for you. And uh, we've got 30 seconds left here. It is Thursday in Colorado. And we got the big U.S. Canvas Expo coming up on Friday and Saturday, June 9 to the 20 at the Colorado Springs Event Center. This is KC Star and Mr. Charles T. Howe. More information about the Expo, to, Expo tomorrow. Adios, amigos. Adios. See you tomorrow. Thank you, Chicago.